Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and it's time for another Ask a Herbert Erpaderp, with me, Herbert Erpaderp. I'm not sure who else it could be with, so there's no surprises there, are there? Before we get started, I would like to say a big thank you to our newest patron, The Vika. Welcome, thank you very much for your support, I most certainly appreciate it. Feel free to submit a voice question sometime if you wish to do so. If you want to be excellent like the Vika, there's a link to Patreon in the description. Before we get to the questions, I want to quickly mention that I've started doing model building streams over on Twitch in addition to games. These streams are scheduled for 8 or sometimes 9am on Sunday, local time that is, which is GMT plus 10. I don't have time to work out time zones for everybody, but there is a schedule on my Twitch page and that should tell you what time I'm streaming in your own time zone. Pretty handy. Anyway, I've done a couple of these streams now and I quite enjoy them. And I do obviously want more people to come along and hang out with me, that would be great. I am planning on doing giveaways in the near future. I actually have the first one planned out already, and they are going to be weighted so that regulars and Twitch subs have more of a chance to win. Is that bribery? Maybe. Let's get to the questions. B-Man said, Have you been watching the new Sabaton History Channel? I have indeed. I've been enjoying it quite a lot, and I would recommend it to anyone with an interest in history and or Sabaton. Also I'm really excited about Sabaton's new album, The Great War. That should be pretty great. Yep, I'm good with words. Ahmed Jerboa said, Ever had a Five Guys? I have not. The only reason I've even heard of Five Guys is Americans talking about it on the internets. I'm pretty sure we don't have it here. I would probably try them, but I wouldn't have high expectations. Carl's Jr. recently opened here and people were really excited about that, to the point of camping outside the store. I will never understand that. Anyway, when I got around to trying it, it was okay. Nothing to get excited about or go camping about, and I would expect Five Guys to be something similar. Sneaky Zaku said, You often pick up vehicles, though I noticed you have gradually picked up some small tidbits of Malifaux over the years. Has there ever been an army for a fantasy game you have looked at and really wanted? Asking since very recently I have decided to act on my own want for a fantasy army of a specific kind. Tree people. I have been slowly collecting Malifaux for a while now, mostly because I think a lot of the models are pretty cool, but I do eventually want to play a game of Malifaux with my friend too, and eventually we will both have a force, or whatever you call it in Malifaux. I haven't really seen a fantasy army that I simply had to have right away, but back when I wanted to play Warhammer Fantasy, when it was called Warhammer Fantasy, I decided I wanted to play the Empire, so I bought a bunch of models for that in one go. I would say it was more of a case of, I kind of like these guys and the steam tank, though I never actually got that, and I wanted an army that my friends weren't playing. I do still have some unbuilt and, I suppose built empire stuff somewhere. I might finish building it one day, or maybe I could sell it, I don't know. For now it's going to stay in the boxes. Trekan Belovich says, Do you like Star Trek Discovery? Well I do, it reminds me of the good old days at the end of season 7 of Deep Space Nine, the Dominion War, and the third season of Star Trek Enterprise. I haven't seen Discovery yet, I don't have Netflix or anything like that. I would like to check it out though, I'm sure there are people who think it's the worst thing ever, just like every new Star Trek, but I'd be willing to give it a go. I just don't have or watch TV but I'm sure I'll get around to it eventually. Actually, as I type this, I'm at a friend's place and we have Deep Space Nine on in the background as we both work on stuff. DS9 is my favourite Star Trek. Some dude said, you should probably add an FAQ pinned message here. You know, that's probably not a bad idea. I mean, I certainly understand people not wanting to go back to make sure their questions haven't been asked before, so I do answer repeat questions from time to time, and it hasn't gotten too annoying so far. And I do kind of have to wonder how much attention would actually be paid to said FAQ. I mean, we have enough trouble getting people to read the pinned messages on the group build. Either way, it's not a bad idea. I will begin implementing that sometime soon. Garrus909 said, Do you prefer natural or synthetic brushes? To be honest, I don't really have a preference. I do use some sable brushes for the majority of my acrylic painting, and I've got some synthetic ones that I use for enamels. 
I had heard that enamels were bad for natural brushes, so I figured it was a good idea to use synthetics for that. But I'm not especially picky about brushes, as long as it does what I want. I guess it's not really the question you asked, but I do know some people who do really good work with basic paint brushes from the dollar store. Just thought it was worth noting, for people who are worried about brushes and brush quality. It's not always worth buying the most expensive thing. Blyatskrieg said, Can you do a video about painting US paratroopers? I don't have any plans to do so in the near future, but I do think my US bolt action infantry are paratroopers, though I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head. I would paint those as paras if that's what they are, but it's a long way off, and I don't think I'll be painting them as a specific unit, more a generic paratrooper. So I guess the answer is a solid possibly. Well, to be fair, it's probably actually a yes. But also, it's not going to happen for a while, so I hope you can be patient. Also, I appreciate your non-demandingness. Ratto said, I am your Mountain Dew, will you be my Doritos? I, uh, I'm diabetic? Duncanuva said, I'll be your KV, will you be my two? Um... Top Bunk Productions said, I'll be your Zimmer, will you be my it? Uh, what are you guys doing? Monol said, I'll be your Koenig, will you be my Tiger? I think I said Koenig wrong? Uh... Ducking Tanker said, I'll be your Desert, will you be my Rommel? Like a fox? Jihad Geppo said, I'll be your Sturm, will you be my Geschutz? I need an adult. Blyatskrieg said, I'll be your Fire, will you be my Fly? You can't take the sky from me. Ratto said, I want to eat you up, senpai. Uh, don't eat the herbert? Help! Help! These are all great examples of very romantic lines. Use them at every opportunity. Adeptus Custodes, is that right? I'm probably saying that wrong. They said, do you ever do Warhammer models? I just started modelling and got a Chimera. I haven't built any Warhammer models for quite a few years. I don't play anymore or really want to, so it doesn't make much sense to work on armies for Warhammer when I could be working on stuff like Bolt Action that I will actually use, if only a little bit. Of course, I do enjoy seeing some of the stuff from Warhammer and a number of people in the Discord community are very much into it. The Meme Master Oof said, What is your favourite and least favourite part of the model building and painting process? My favourite part is probably weathering and highlighting. My least favourite is base coating. Hmm, I'm not really sure. I do enjoy the entire model assembly process, really. And I'm not really all that big on picking favourites of anything, really. I guess I don't really like working with resin or puttying things very much. But I can't think of one part of the assembly that's my favourite. I guess the satisfaction when things start looking like actual things instead of little bits of plastic. Sometimes clipping stuff from sprues and cleaning mould lines can be relaxing too. Sometimes. Also, I can't decide if I like any one aspect of painting more or less than others. I guess some parts can be easier than others. I suppose as a way of answering, I like painting in interesting or unusual colours for the subject, like pink on a panther for example. Weathering is pretty fun, I do enjoy doing that, and I suppose the worst part is set up and clean up. Especially when you clean up and then notice you've forgotten something that needs to be done. Uncle Joe said, What are your thoughts on Iron Brew? I like it. I don't often drink it though because of diabetes. I know it does come in a sugar-free version, but I don't remember if I've had it or even seen it in the shop. And I only ever see the regular Iron Brew in individual cans, and it's not especially cheap, so I don't normally feel compelled to buy it. General Spade said, How much church would a Churchill church if a Churchill could hill church? <laughs> I'm not sure how one hills a church, but I suppose I don't really need to know. I'm not a Churchill. I think the answer might be 42. Badger said, Have you heard of Wojtek or Unsinkable Sam? If not, I encourage you to look them up, because their stories are quite interesting. I'm pretty sure Wojtek is a bear. I wrote that and then googled it to see if I was right. I'm pretty sure I'm saying his name wrong, but I do really like the idea of a bear in an army. It seems he carried ammo around. I think it would be really cool to model him accompanying an artillery model or something like that for bolt action. Does anybody know of any good 28mm scale bear models? Let me know in the comments below. 
I have definitely also heard of Unsinkable Sam, who was a cat. The ships he was on during World War II were certainly not unsinkable. Really interesting animals. Does anyone know of any other animals that served in World War II or were otherwise known for something interesting around that time? Let me know. On last Fortnite's Ask a Herbert Herbert Ratto said, No, you put gasoline in a diesel car. No, I didn't. I mean, I tried. The game doesn't let you though. Also, I sort of forgot that there were two kinds of fuel. The Tourette's Gamer, in relation to the plastic Matilda shown in the modelling section of last Fortnite's Ask a Herbert Herbert Herb said, I didn't have any issues putting together the Matilda, and I must say there were minimal mould lines. That's really awesome to hear. I'm still pretty excited to get a hold of that kit. I probably won't get it for a while, but eventually I will. And that day will be awesome. Adam Cool said, Dude, you are a legend. I know. I'm also incredibly modest. Thanks, I really enjoy your name. And that's all of the questions this fortnight. Thank you very much to everyone who asked a thing. If you have something you would like me to answer next fortnight, put it in the comment section below or on Discord if you prefer that. Now it's time to check out the models that have been shared in our glorious and mighty Discord community. First up, Ratto shared this war corresponder. This fellow is a civilian reporter, wearing an orange hat so that nobody shoots him. The official news channel of Yu Jing would like to remind you that Yu Jing is a wonderful place to live. Emperor is great and people of Yu Jing are the happiest that have ever lived. Here is Lu Jing. I'm not sure if I've said that right. In fact, I probably haven't. I really like the reds and oranges in this. It's very nice. Ratto said this took 8 hours and I would say that it's 8 hours well spent. Very nice models and excellent paintwork as usual. Monol shared this T-55 Commander, saying that it's quite difficult to paint a figure at this scale. I believe it is 15mm scale, and I do agree. Painting teeny tiny little people in that scale is kind of hard, but you've done a really good job of it here. Also, here is the entire T-55. There were a couple more, but they weren't finished at the time and this one is. And I must say it looks excellent. It's quite convincing and you can't really tell how small it actually is. Very nice. General Spade shared this work in progress T-3485. I'm pretty certain this is the Warlord kit, the same one that I built on Monday's video. General Spade has added some battle damage and the traditional Soviet logs, and hand painted the markings to give it a more authentic look. Very nice work. And we don't even need to wait to see it finished because here it is. This looks really good. It looks like it's been fighting those pesky Germans good and hard for a long while. I like what you did with the mudguards. Keep up the excellent work. Pax Britannica shared these friendly fellows. These are Ambots. Their names are Bulldog and Old Bill. Really interesting looking models. Also very well painted. The Vika says Akjung Kraken while sharing this Tamiya 1700 scale Scharnhorst, which is being attacked by a ferocious toy squid. This is a really cool and unique way to display a model ship. Great idea and excellent execution. The Vika also shared this crashed B-17. This is a 148 scale model to be used as bolt action terrain. This is really great. I like that you've got different chunks of wreckage on separate bases to make it reconfigurable. Very nice. Top Bunk Productions completed this Warlord Italery Panther A. I believe a while ago Top Bunk shared how the awful Hull MG on this kit can be improved. It involved shoving some putty in there which is obviously a simple idea but quite effective as you can see here. The paint scheme is quite interesting. I have no idea if it's based in reality or something from Top Bunk's imagination but I rather like it. I did see that some people took issue with the driver wearing that helmet but I think it looks cool. Maybe it's looted and he's tired of being bonked in the head by the gun. And here is Top Bunk's sniper for his Soviet Stalingrad army. The sniper figure is very nicely painted and everything, but the really interesting thing about this is the base. It makes the model that much more convincing. I may well steal this idea for my own Soviets when I get around to basing them. Is this piece of wall something that you've scratch built or purchased from somewhere? Either way, very very good work. Costas shared this tiny little SDKFZ222. This is a 1 100th scale Zvezda kit, and it looks really good. I haven't managed to get my hands on one of these yet, but one day I will. 
The spare wheel on the side looks like it might be in a cover or something, which looks a bit weird, but that's okay. This has made me really want to get this kit. Very nice. The Tank Man shared this group of teeny tiny Russian tanks. KVs and T-34s in both 76 and 85 flavour. These are 1 300th scale micro armour and they look really great. Maybe I should get some more of these myself. Even if you don't play games with them, they're pretty neat little models to have. Nice work. Sneaky Zaku shared this, I don't actually know what she is, but I'm sure this is a Warhammer figure. Very nicely painted and mildly terrifying. Though I must admit that at first glance I thought it was some broccoli. At any rate, this is awesome work. And here she is with some more tree friends. These are pretty cool and apparently called Sylvaneth. I'm sure that's not how you say it, but maybe it is. Very nice models, painted very well. I really like the owl. Len shared this awesome centaur. This is really nicely done. I do like those number markings that you see on centaurs. It's really interesting looking. Somebody asked what those markings were for, and it was to help people outside the tank communicate with it, being that they were used for supporting the infantry. I believe by lobbing high explosive and maybe smoke shells too. Len mentioned something along those lines in the comments too, so I must not be imagining having learned that at some point. Very nice tank. Max Strike Eagle has finished this Tamiya 135th scale M55-1, I believe also known as a Sheridan, which isn't a very tough sounding name, but that's okay. This is a very muddy boy, a very good looking muddy boy, and I think that's what really matters. Max mentioned a homemade mud mix he used on this, but I can't recall what it is off the top of my head. But I would wager you could find it in the modelling channel somewhere. Either way, it looks quite good. The entire model looks great. Skeletor has made a sandbag hidey hole for his tiger. Not going to lie, I thought this was meat at first glance. Somebody mentioned the sandbags being a bit too big, and I do agree. Otherwise, it's not bad, and I'd like to see it finished. I do enjoy seeing people make their own stuff out of things like clay. Ducking Tanker's first Imperial Knight is, in this picture, 99% done. It looks like a good stompy, choppy, shooty boy. I quite like the colours you've used here. The creamy colour fits nicely and works well with the red in my opinion. Good work. Jihad Geppo shared this now completed 1 16th scale stalker slash metro inspired diorama, handcrafted from extruded polystyrene foam. Well, obviously the figure isn't, nor the barbed wire, but that's just being pedantic. This looks absolutely amazing. We've seen the figure on Ask a Herbadurbadurb before. Definitely worth sharing again with this diorama. There was a lot of work in progress pictures of this shared too, so definitely check that out if you want to see how it was done and get some inspiration. If the finished product isn't inspiring enough. It really should be, it's really good. And that's it for the models this fortnight. As always, I haven't shared everything that was posted on Discord, because doing so would result in a 12 hour video with all of the good stuff you guys are posting. I do really enjoy it though. It makes me happy to see these models every day. Of course, if you do want to see everything, head on over to the modelling section on Discord and feel free to share your own work too. And now, because we didn't do it last fortnight, let's go and look at the arts and crafts. Uncle Seal shared this really nice picture of some leaves. This looks to be ink. I don't know much about ink, but I do know that this looks really good. Top Bunk Productions shared this Soviet T-54, which was drawn from memory. I'm no T-54 surgeon, but it looks pretty good to me. Even if it is inaccurate, it looks rad and that's what counts. Top Bunk also drew this tribute to the most pathetic SS unit of all time. The British Free Corps, or Brit-ish Fail Corps as he's labelled it. This is hilarious and great. I really like the derpy guy with the backwards Panzerfaust. Dreadnought Luna drew this KV2, saying they don't colour very often. I think the colour is fine. I like how you've done the darker green in the shadowy areas. Nice work. Gopnik shared this sketch of the very iconic picture of the Soviet flaggy man over Berlin. That is the proper name for it. Also, this pair of shooty mans. These are some very nice sketches, and Gopnik says they were done on normal paper with 10 graphite pigment. Very cool. Jihad Geppo has done some awesome Bob Ross art. Happy little trees, glorious mountains, some water. What more could you want? Well, a cabin I guess. But you can't just add cabins to everything. Very good work. 
Bliatz Creek drew this very angry shooty boy. I really like the little face in the upper left, though I'm not sure if it's a lion or a beaver or a person. It's entertaining anyway. Also, this less shooty person. They do have a gun so they are somewhat shooty, just not as much as the first one. And that's all for the arts. Like with the models I have omitted a bunch of stuff, and if you want to see the rest, feel free to head on over to the creative section on Discord. Thanks to everyone who shared some modelling work or artwork, I really enjoyed it. Also thanks to everybody who asked a question. Ask a Herpaderpaderp would be nothing without questions. And a big extra thanks to the Vika who became a patron the other day. You can't see me, but I gave a hearty thumbs up. If you've not done so already, feel free to subscribe, follow, ring the bell, and all the other things you do on YouTube and social media. Links to all of the things including Patreon and my Twitch channel are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other and thanks for watching. Farewell.